Hey everybody, we are back with another review, and today we're going to be checking out something pretty cool. Uh, so without further ado, let's hop right into this review. Today we're going to be checking out something uh, that I've been working on for the past few weeks. I've been trying to come up with a composite hemp filament. Um, something that we don't have on the market right now, and it's something that I think would be pretty cool if we did have it. Um, but what are composite filaments? So kind of want to go over some of the ones that we have now. Some of my favorite ones to use, and... Uh, kind of show you what I ended up doing with some hemp. So straight out the gate, we got some Anycubic Basic White PLA. This is what I ended up using for the entire experiment. This is the uh, filament that I ended up using to blend with the hemp as well. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show you just a bare basic foundational element to this little uh, experiment and the prototype. Uh, it all started with some Anycubic Basic White PLA. So... Uh, some of the, I guess some of my favorite composites that they have uh, out there on the market right now. Um, we'll start off with some of my, some of the ones that I like that are metal. These are going to be um, metal fill. These are going to be 60%, 40% split. This one is copper from Protopasta. And uh, again, yeah, like I said, 60% of it's going to be metallic flake. And then 40% of it's going to be PLA. So... Uh, pretty cool. And this one is steel, which again, it looks just like the um, intended metal. And then we got some brass here. You can see that. It's got a nice brass color. Next up, we got some iron. Now, the iron one is really cool because this one is uh, ferromagnetic. So I ended up in one of my previous videos where I printed tools. I printed a little 10 millimeter wrench, which I actually do use uh, this this wrench to tighten down my um, little Bowden tube couplers. So I know that if it uh, if I pulled crank down too hard with this and split this, then I'm probably going to split the plastic I'm screwing the Bowden tube adapter into. But uh, again, magnetic, which is so cool that uh, this one's got a little bit of a little special property to it versus the, some of the other metallics. Uh, and then lastly, we got is some bronze. Now these are all going to be composites uh, at a 60-40 split, and those are all different types of metallics that you could get on the market right now that are composite. Uh, those are a little bit higher on the spectrum for uh, fill. So again, that 60-40 split is going to be way off from where I'm at with the uh, fibrous like wood type material. So we'll go to that soon too. Next up, let's check out some of the marble. So people always ask me, like, you know, marble, uh, does it actually have marble or stone in it? It does. It actually has about, like, a 30% uh, ratio. Some some other brands have different ones. This is Sunlu right here. i got two different kinds here. We have a blue and more of a, a greenish tinge marble here. But it's all going to be stone fill, and it's going to be 30%. So 30% uh, stone uh, grounded up. It's not going to have chunks of marble in it. But um, the stone particulate that they do use is all going to be probably uniform ground down so that it extrudes properly um, and for the end product for when it's spooled up like this. So uh, some varieties of stone. So if you're wondering if marble is actually marble, it actually has some stone in it when they, when they create that and they actually um, use the fill for that. Next up is one of my favorite ones that's not a PLA. This one's Pet G, but it's filled with glass. So just another type of composite material that you can have. Um, you know, a fill of. So we got glass, we got stone, we have metal over here. Uh, we'll try one more exotic and then I'll show you. This is Fibron from Polymaker and this is going to be carbon fiber nylon, which is the goat. This is the best. Um, my favorite hard, durable, um, high temperature resistant material. If you're looking for the goat, this is it. This is the Fibron um, from Polymaker. You're definitely going to want to grab this. Um, half a half a kilo spool that's how they come it's uh, about the same price as a normal kilogram spool around 30 to 35 bucks for these composites again composites are a little more pricey when you see stuff like the bronze composite it's a 500 gram spool for around fifty dollars if you're looking for a whole kilogram you're talking about 100 bucks a spool for the protopasta metallic composites uh, same thing goes for the fibron you know it's going to be it's going to be a half a kilo um, priced around what you're normally typically looking to spend for a kilo, but you're getting that better material. It's going to be more stable. It's going to be more 
it might be a little bit less brittle, but it's going to be able to handle a lot more load in regards to temp um, and usage um, regularly, if that makes sense. Uh, so next thing is some wood. Uh, this is actually the walnut that I use. This is from Amelin. Uh, this is some walnut wood, PLA, um, where they have the yeah, it's walnut, walnut wood. Is, is actually walnut wood? No. Is this one actually cherry wood from Ovo 3D? No. Um, they're just basically, it's, they use 30% fill on the wood as well. Um, it's basically just colored to look like that uh, type of wood. So cherry wood, this is just basically a sawdust type of material or a uh, like a wood fibrous material. I'm going to guess sawdust is probably what they use to start this off. Um, and then they'll do, sometimes wood will go up to 50% fill for these composites, but this one's a 30 and so is the amylin, which is kind of where I got the idea for this particular um, product. And you can see the walnut. Again, it's not necessarily walnut wood. We don't really know like what type of woods that go into this, what type of hardwoods and softwoods they're mixing uh, into their you know, filaments, but um, they make it look like a walnut color. So when it prints, that's what it's meant to look like. So if you're ever wondering, is that real walnut or like is the black one, like black walnut or are these things made out of actual woods that are on there? No, but it's meant to look like the wood that they're describing. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. So I started off making, I did two baselines, which are 200% infill um, little little squares here. They're 33 grams each. Everything today is, I based it off 33. Um, so that's how I did this. And the baseline, just basic white PLA, 33 grams. And I did that mainly so you could have a, an auditory idea of kind of what some of the composites that I, I, I printed out and I was working with sound like. So again, the metal, 60-40, the wood and the marble, you're looking at around a 30 uh, 30, 70 split, uh, and some of these glass filled, like this glass filled one and the, uh, the pet G, uh, again, going to be around, some of them are different. Some of them are going to be 50, some of them are going to be 30, but it's all really manufacturer and how brittle they want their material or how strong they want it to be. So, um, so I created the baseline and then I said, let's see some wood. So I printed up some of this walnut from Amelin. And I ended up having some just baseline little blocks that I can actually hear auditorily, like what it actually sounds like composite wise. And then I ended up securing some organic hemp fiber. It's a full plant extract. So it's like nose to tail essentially, which is essentially the whole plant gets grounded up and formulated into this very fine, ultra fine powder, which you can see the powder actually goes down to 50 micron. Um, which is super, super ultra fine, which is what I was really looking for because I wanted it to blend with the plastic um, and to be able to mix properly with it. I knew anything that was going to be like more coarse than ultra fine, it wasn't going to blend properly with um, the plastic, the PLA. So what did I end up doing from, from here, from this point? Um, again, here's some of the ratios. 30 on this wood. Um, nine grams of wood actually added to the 33 grams. So that just gives me kind of a little bit of a ratio here because what I ended up doing is I grabbed one of these OXO ice cube trays. Now it's a six by six tray here, as you can see, and they're two inch squares. So this really made everything very, very easy to do because I was able to take out this little tray, put this on my scale, tear it out and then use this to measure and weigh out the plastic and the amount of hemp composite I wanted to put in there. Now you saw some scribble here on the top. Uh, this is how I essentially set this up. We did a 10% fill, 20% fill, 30% fill, and then a 25% fill. And I lined these up in this regard just so I knew exactly where they were and which one the fill was. Um, which the 10% at 33 grams for the square, I got 3.3 grams of hemp fibers material to add to that, 6.6 uh, 6 on the 20% and 9.9 .9 on the 30. And then for the 25, it was 8.2 grams. So what does that essentially mean? Um, I weighed out the plastic at 33 grams. Then I weighed out the hemp material at the, uh, you know, annotated little notes here that I have, 8.2, the 3.3, 6.6, and 9.9. .9. Weighed that all together and then put them in the compartments. Took this particular tray out because it's all silicone. It's meant for ice cubes, but again, silicone, so you can put this in the oven. Um, 
Definitely use this in a well-ventilated space if you're trying to mimic or replicate this type of experiment. Or, to, or if you want to make your own composite materials, <clears throat> you can do that yourself. Um, but for the little experiment that I used with this, I ended up putting this on a sheet tray with some aluminum foil down just in case anything got uh, spilled over. It didn't necessarily burn um, or start smoking. And then I ended up putting it in the oven at 500 degrees, which ended up working, I think about 90 minutes. And then I ended up coming up with these and we'll check out what we ended up getting. Here's my little sample products that I came up with here for the hemp composite. And you can see that I, I mean, they're, you know, I mixed them and, you know, tried to make sure that everything was thoroughly, um, integrated together as best as I could with the tools that I have. So as you can see here, we got my 10%, 20, 25, and 30% with the designated uh, gram contents on there. Again, baseline was 33 grams of plastic, which I used the white filament from AnyCubic. And what I ended up doing was cutting it in actually about pieces this big, uh, two inch long strips and just stuck them in there. It just made it super easy to melt them down. Um, at that 500 degrees, but let's check out some of the different here. What we'll do is I'll put this down and then we'll kind of listen, kind of listen to what it sounds like in regards to some of the other ones. So this is the 10%, which you can see it has a really nice lighter color to it. Almost looks like a stone. And I mean, it came out super smooth in that silicone mold, which I really liked that. That was the 10% one. And then you can see the 20%, 20% ratio, a little bit darker than the 10%, of course, because it's got, you know, a little bit more in there, um, but still looks good. Almost looks like a marble look to it. And you can see the, the color of the particulate did turn a little bit darker color because, again, it was in the 500 degree oven. Um, so I'm guessing if this was done in a little bit of a different fashion, it might maintain its greenness a little more. Then we got the 25%, which as you can see, it's just a little bit darker than this one. But when you put it up next to the 10, you can definitely see a noticeable difference. And then the last one was the 30%, which again, you put that next to the 10 and you can definitely see a noticeable difference there um, for that material integrated in with the white PLA. Super light on the 10% spectrum and you can definitely see it getting darker as it gets to that 30. Um, so, uh, in regards to the composite material, I think this is a win. This is an absolute win uh, on this. I mean, it really does feel nice and durable. Does it feel brittle? I did run a, um, what's it called? A deburring tool on this, and it ended up slicing off a nice piece on the corner. It didn't chip off um, any of the 10%. The one that it did chip off was, uh, you can see here, there's a little chip right there. There's a little chip right here. So when I got to the 30%, it ended up becoming, I think, a lot more brittle than I wanted it to be. Um, I think the the magic sweet spot is probably around the 20 to 25% fill because I was still able to run a deburring tool along the corners here, as you can see, and along the sides, and it didn't chip anything off. It was a nice, clean slice. And what does that mean to me? That means that it's going to be something where if it's a higher fill for this hemp, um, it's probably going to be way more brittle than I want it to be. Or if this was actually turned into filament, um, it might be something that gets broken off inside my AMS units or uh, something that maybe breaks off in the extruder or something like that. So in regards to the, the composite actual ratio, I think probably the sweet spots somewhere around the, maybe I, maybe I could do, a, I should have done 15%. <clears throat> I didn't really think about doing a 15% because I knew I was going to kind of hover around in the 20 to 25%. I did 30 for a more extreme, but maybe 20% probably would be a good, a good mixture because you get that strength, you get that brittleness uh, minimized, and you get the also the strength from the plastic as well. So what does this sound like? Let's see some auditory. Kind of has a muted tone, but let's hear let's hear the let's hear actual plastic. Kind of more of a tinny, loud, loud noise, and then here is so you're kind of kind of a little bit louder for the lighter ones, and let's hear some of the so kind of here the composite noise is getting a little bit more. I guess I don't know what you say muted. Um, here we'll grab uh, where's the side with the 
you can kind of hear the mutedness here on the 30% wood um, in regards to what I'm talking about because the more composite you get, I got 30 and a 30 here, the more composite you get in there, it sounds like the more muted it becomes because again, there's going to be more of that other material in there that's not making that tinny noise of just the straight plastic smacking together like this. So overall, I think it was a success. I think the uh, little prototype that I made here in regards to the different ratios, I think are going to be really nice. And uh, yeah, if there's any filament companies out there that want to make this a reality, you know where to get a hold of me. Um, you know who you are. But yeah, I think this is, uh, I think this has a very, very, um, you know, application, uh, or I should say a very, very strong application for uh, industrial use, commercial use, and also for outdoor use. Um, like if you're living on a farm or something like that, and you want to have, you know, maybe something that's a little bit stronger than pet G. I, I have a feeling this probably would be, it would be nice to turn this into pellet form turn it into something where I can actually get a print and start doing some tests on print. So maybe that'll be the next step. And if you want me to do that, let me know down in the comments below. Should we make more of this? And which ratio do you think we should go with um, for the hemp composite? So we got 30, 25, 20, 10. If you think I should do a 15, let me know. And yeah, if you want me to turn this into pellets and then we can spool up some filament. Um, let me know. We can we can try something out or, you know, maybe we can do some like a gauntlet or something against other uh, similar composites like I can get different brands of wood um, composites because that would probably be the closest to the hemp and I can maybe use that as something where I can do a test of brittleness, durability, uh, strength, and even outdoor application use. So why don't you let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of hemp? filament. Do you think this is a viable option for commercial use, industrial use? Do you think this is something that could change the industry in regards to composites? Do you think this is something that could take a hobby uh, type of filament and turn it into something that could be industrially used, commercially used for construction, for different types of parts, for outdoor use? Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think about hemp and plastic mixed together into one product. Yeah, that's basically what we're looking for. We want to know what everyone thinks about hemp and PLA mixed together, hemp filament. And uh, yeah, we ended up making it happen. So I uh, want you to let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Want more content like this, subscribe for more. Have a great rest of your day.